Hello fellow adventurers and collectors, Fimahalak here. On today's episode, we're going to be starting off with a little bit of a story time. For those of you who don't know or haven't seen me talk about this before, uh, this isn't my first time collecting G.I. Joe in the 12 inch scale, or rather the vintage style G.I. Joes. I forget what year it was, but probably about 2017, 2016 that I got my first G.I. Joe, vintage style G.I. Joe. Prior to that, I was more of a six inch collector. I stuck to Marvel Legends and, you know, the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures, but uh, I don't know what spurred my interest. I just figured one day I'd look up, you know, these vintage G.I. Joes and I found one for pretty cheap. It was around $20, I believe, and it just so happened to be the Atomic Man or Mike Powers. I forget which one is the American name and which one is the English name, but you know i'll switch uh, in between them throughout this video so forgive me for that but uh i bought him i had no idea of the history behind the character nor did i know you know how big they were it wasn't until it arrived that i really realized the scale of these figures and from there i was hooked you know i bought several other gi joes from then and then which funnily enough i mainly stuck to adventure team figures and I dressed them up more military style like World War II because at the time I was very interested in Band of Brothers and whatnot. So yeah, I, it's very interesting how that kind of unfolded looking back on it but unfortunately as time went on I, you know, life happened so I had to sell that collection so slowly but surely I came back around and started with the collection 2.0. and. One figure that I've been meaning to get, and I haven't really necessarily put in the effort to do it, was the Atomic Man. I've had a special place for that guy ever since I uh, bought him because he was my first vintage style G.I. Joe. So when I came across this listing, I figured I'd uh, hit two birds with one stone essentially. This is a head sculpt that I was missing. and. Believe it or not, was a figure that I didn't even have in my first collection. And this is the Palatoy version with the flocked hair. Now, does it really make a difference at the end of the day? No, not really. But I, for the price that they were asking for, I was happily able to pay for it. So having uh, him in my collection now definitely brings back those old feelings that I had when I first started collecting these G.I. Joes. So it's nice to have him back in the fold. And... I figured I'd dress him up. I've had this shirt for a long time. It was sitting in my parts bin, so unfortunately it doesn't fit him because I sold it a little bit tighter because it was uh, ripped at the seam, but I, th I don't know. I think it gives him a unique look and I ended up having to replace his hand, so I modified some newer G.I. Joe hands to fit into the pegs. So Outside of that, I did some little bit of modification to his elbow and knee so that he can actually stand. Unfortunately, they were loose. And I didn't want to break the clear plastic, so I took some uh, foam, sticky back foam, and put it inside the joint so it can add some thickness to it. So I know everyone has seen these figures every once in a while, but uh, this uh, Palatoy version does have some unique features in that it comes with a atomic pacemaker, essentially. It just clicks and the whatnot, but it's a very unique looking figure it, to me it kind of reminds me of Ken if he was stylized in a G.I. Joe motif but yeah I'm glad to have him back in the collection and it really does make me nostalgic for my first go around in the collecting but I'm happy where I'm at right now and where the collection is because I definitely have a lot more pieces I didn't have in that older collection so with that said I thank you all for watching and if you feel so inclined please like comment and or subscribe I'd very much appreciate it I'll catch you all next time